this video I'm going to do a brief installation of the ring engineering end of train device uh, truck coupler and flashing LED end of train device. So I'm just going to go ahead and talk while I open this up. So I did a video earlier this week where I added a sound tsunami sound car decoder and speaker to one of my rolling stock. In the era of my layout Cabooses were still pretty prominent, but it did coincide with the rise in the use of end-of-train devices that essentially ended the um, widespread use of caboose, cabooses at the back of trains. So I wanted the ability, even though I still use cabooses on my layout, I wanted to have the ability to have an end-of-train device uh, to go and just sort of model the transition between cabooses to um, non-caboose freight, freight trains. Here are the instructions. Nice thing is if you go to ringengineering.com it actually lists all of the instructions in a PDF online so you can view these online. Try to put the disclaimer with all of my videos um, my videos are for inst uh, instructional purposes only. They do not substitute for um, reading and following the manufacturer's instructions. Okay, so this is all an all in, uh, all inclusive truck set. So here's the underside of it, and here's the actual processor um, that allows the LED to flash. You can see there's no screw opening on this side and there is on this side. So to install this, I actually have to take the wheels off of the actual truck, install it, and then reinstall the truck. So let's go ahead and do that. The instructions are very straightforward. You take a small flathead and just gently pry on the outside of the axle to get it to come loose. Okay, there's one. Get this one. Okay, there's two. So we just very gently pull this off here. There we go. Like I said, just being very, very gentle, very careful with it. So now we'll take and get the covered hopper over here that I'm going to install this on. So here is the covered hopper I'm going to install this on. So first thing I'm going to start taking the truck off. I'm going to save the screw. Pull that off. Now I have to get the coupler out of here, so I'm just going to gently pry this so the so I'm just taking my time here and being very, very careful not to damage this. There we go. One more little pop here. There we go. So they're quite solid. Okay, so now I have the coupler actually fell out. And the nice thing is with this end of train device, it actually has a self centering spring, so you can take uh, the spring part out, so I've taken that out. Now I just have my coupler exposed here, so let's go ahead and get this thing mounted. Okay, so now I'm going to set the coupler. And I'm making use of some of the packaging here, because I need to put the coupler in before I can mount the truck. So I'm just going to set the powered wheels off to the side here. I'm going to mount that. 
Now I'm going to take my coupler cover and get this coupler put back in place and held in place. Sorry, this is real difficult with a video camera in front of you. Okay. Okay, so that's securely in place. Here's the coupler with the end of train device on it. So now I'm going to take the frame that on here. Grab my screw. I have to love magnetized screwdrivers. Put this in. <clears throat> and I'm going to test it since once I put the trucks on, the wheels on, Got some play in it. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and reinstall the wheels. Okay, so like I said, I just double checked this to make sure it wasn't bound up or anything. So now I'm going to carefully set the wheels back in there. And again, we're just going to gently, like we did when we took the wheels out of the frame, <clears throat> going to pry on the outside. There we go. I'm just going to double check to make sure this is the wheels are free spinning. They are. The coupler's free spinning. Alright, there we go. It is installed. Let's go to the layout and check this thing out. <laughs> 